Hey, welcome back, you guys. It's me, Coach Adamir. It is Living Your Best Life on Spotify, Apple, YouTube, wherever you're listening. Thank you. I appreciate you joining. Woo, it's April 1st, you guys. We made it to a new month. We're four months into the year. So I hope you guys are still on track with your goals. If not, that's totally okay. It happens, right? So all we got to do is just get back on track try to readjust. We talked about it last week, reassess where we were, um, and then remake your goals. Um, So just see where you are. If you haven't gone or accomplished what you thought you you were going to, that's okay. Uh, Maybe break it down into smaller chunks, um, readjust your goals, readjust your timeline. Um, But don't stress on it. You'll be all right. I promise. Okay. So Thanks again for joining. For those of you that are new here, um, if you haven't listened to any of my previous episodes, please go back and listen. Uh, There's a lot of good, valuable information that I talk about from um, experience with clients, experience just on the job. um, And, you know, being at this age now, I think I've gone through enough to be able to uh, share my experiences and hope that you guys can learn from them. Um, So, This episode today, we're going to shift a little bit um, into not necessarily a different direction. Um, We're still going to cover health and wellness, fitness, um, that same overall theme. The only difference is I'm going to shift a little bit more and talk directly to my men over 30. Um, I'm 35. I'm going to be 36 this year. Not to say I haven't accepted it or realized it, quote unquote, but um, it has taken me a moment to realize that at this age, given the experience I have, given the things I've been through, injuries, um, just mental struggles with training and health and fitness and nutrition and all those things, I feel like I'm at a good position where I can give back and share those experiences. And, um, you know, they always say it's best to learn from other people's mistakes So maybe we can learn from my mistakes or my experiences, but um, I want to make sure that you guys know that I relate to you as a male 35-year-old, especially as a male Hispanic 35-year-old. You know, there's so many other things that we have to deal with um, that others don't realize or that we just don't vocalize either. So I wanted to get into more of that, talk to you guys more directly, give you guys a little more direction. Um, a little bit of insight into what what I deal with and how I deal with those things so that you guys can go and kind of take the same ideas and and work them into your life. Um, So today we're just going to set the foundation on what it is to be 30 and older um, and navigating through the the changes that we go through um, as far as our, 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 our hormonal changes, our physical changes, our mental changes. Um, even our maturity level, right? Most men don't mature until they're in their later 30s, maybe early 40s from what we know from psychology. So, um, you know, over 30 is kind of an age where we kind of have to start settling down maybe a little bit more and um, honing down on exactly what it is we're trying to accomplish with our lives. So, um, I'm going to give you an example of an, a successful, successful executive in his 30s. Let's just call him John for generic purposes because I don't know any other generic name besides maybe William. Uh, so let's just go with John. Uh, he's a successful executive in his mid-30s. Uh, maybe you may not be successful executive, but you may be successful in your job in whatever it is you're doing, right? So we can relate in the sense that He's doing well for himself. So successful executive, mid-30s. On paper, he's got it all. He's got a great career, beautiful family, beautiful wife, nice house, nice car, um, great friends, all the things that you could, I guess, hope to have um, when you're in your mid-30s, right? But just like all of us, John a little bit has lately felt a little bit tired all the time. Uh, His having to use an extra loop. Uh, I'm sorry, an extra notch on the belt, right? The belt's getting smaller. Um, And that just like that spark he had, that that passion for life, it just feels kind of dim. It feels kind of gone. And he secretly wonders if, you know, this is it. Did I peak, you know? 
uh, I think we've all felt that. I think a lot of us have gone through that point where we have accomplished what we set out to accomplish. We got the family, we got the job, we have the kids. Um, you know, we we hang out with the family on the weekends or friends. Maybe we go on trips, we go golfing, or we go on family vacations or, or trips with friends and things like that with their families and our kids and all that. They all intermingle, right? We We feel like we've reached that. Um, that I'm not, I'm not talking from experience myself. I don't have children. Um, but I do know the pressures that we face as males in the thirties where we're supposed to maybe have bought a house already or, um, you know, have that family. Maybe we're not married. <laughs> maybe we don't have the house yet. Maybe we don't have the success that we thought we should have had by now or the success that we have been told we need to have by now. Um, so we all face that pressure and there's there's ways to navigate through that as long as we understand what we go through at that age and how how we can use our age to our advantage um you know with age comes maturity with age comes experience and knowledge and the accumulation of experiences right so we learn from those things. We learn from the mistakes. We learn from watching other people. Um, we educate ourselves and we use that education to better our situations and our circumstances and make better choices. So first thing we're going to dive into is being beyond 30. Um, there's certain things we deal with that we don't talk about, that no one really tells us about, and that we don't really think about. And that's our metabolism and our hormones. Um, when you're 30, as Soon as you hit 30, the next day, that actual day, really, because you start to get older the moment you turn older, right? So <laughs> that the moment that your birthday comes, you're already that, that much more, that much older. Um, but beginning in your 30s is when your testosterone levels begin to gradually decline. Um, the levels in your body begin to decline. The levels that your body produces begin to decline. So we have a little bit of um, kind of a uphill battle um, once we hit 30 because now our testosterone levels are lower, which means it's going to affect our muscle mass, our recovery time. So we may not be able to exercise as intensely. We may not be able to lift as heavily. We may not be able to, uh, if you play sports, you know, I played soccer. I would love to go play like two, three times a week. It ha I had to scale it back to twice a week and then once a week and then once a year and then once every other year and then... <laughs> But I had to scale it back a little bit, you know, and and not to say that I can't go back and play, but, you know, it affected me a little bit where I thought, oh, man, I like, why can't I keep up anymore? Why do I feel so exhausted now? Or there have been times where I go play and I, I'm excited to play, but I feel so sluggish and just out of breath. And it just comes with the territory of being over 30. Our bodies just don't recover as quickly. Um so it affects our physical strength, our muscle mass. It affects our energy levels having low testosterone. We may not be in such a good mood. We may not be able to make it through the day without maybe an extra cup of coffee or extra boost of caffeine. Um, we may fall asleep earlier. We may not sleep well because our energy levels are just so off kilter. So we deal with those things. Um, and when we are low on energy or when we feel like fatigued or we feel in a sense, weaker because we can't lift as heavy or we can't work out as hard. It does affect our mood. We, we start to feel maybe depressed, maybe anxious as to why am I feeling this way or why is this happening to me? Uh, maybe we feel a little upset and kind of defeated. Almost like we don't know what's going to happen now and thinking, did I pass my prime and now I'm just going to decay and be old and decrepit? I know those thoughts go through our head, but we can't let that happen. Um, it, 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 we have to be mentally stronger. Um, and then the last thing we get affected with, with our low testosterone levels, which if you're married, even if you're single, you definitely don't want to deal with this, but a lower libido, which means you just have a lower sex drive. Um, you just don't have the passion for it. You don't have the desire for it. Lower testosterone levels, lower sex drive, probably lower, uh, satisfaction at home too. So Think about those things when we start talking about incorporating 
more exercise, more movement, better nutrition to improve all those things so that you don't affect, you don't get affected from low muscle mass or low energy or, or low sex drive. Um, you know, there's other people that get affected by it. So you got to consider that too. Um, you know, you'll, you'll probably notice that it's harder to build muscle. You're building a little bit more padding around your belly, right? You're getting more belly fat. Uh, you're, you're just, you're, you don't have that, that extra step. You kind of have, you feel like you're, you're behind a little bit. Like you kind of have to rev the engine a few times before you can actually start hitting the road. Um, it happens. It's okay. That's what's going to happen with your metabolism. You can't really change the way your body functions as far as testosterone levels declining. We can prevent it from declining so quickly. Um, and that way you don't have to deal with the issues of low testosterone. Um, now, when we get to our 30s, um, we've, for, f I know for me, in the beginning of the early, my early 20s, I worked corporate, a corporate sales job, um, and then into my later mid-20s, and then I shifted into training. Um, but during that period of time when I was in that corporate world, it was really just about climbing that corporate ladder. Uh, getting the next promotion, getting that next uh, pay level, right? Achieving that next level in your company and really proving yourself better than others or better than you were a year ago because now you're in a better position. You maybe have a higher salary. Uh, you have more people working for you or you have less responsibilities because now you have more delegation responsibilities, things like that. Um, so you have this like, drive to continuously get better to continuously get to the next level but when you get to your 30s you don't maybe necessarily feel the same way anymore um you kind of start thinking what else do you feel passionate about passionate about what else does what else makes you tick right what else makes your heart pound to to give you that same type of fulfillment i think after 30 35, um, we start to think about more important things, what means more to us, spending time with our family, maybe, um, giving our family the things that we feel they deserve. Um, maybe it's a job or, or volunteering and serving more with a purpose. Uh, like for me, I was fortunate enough to fall into training because of my sales job. I worked at a gym. I saw the training. I was in sports my whole life. I was pretty fit my whole life. Um, and now what brings me fulfillment is helping people like you, helping men like you, um, to be better, to become the best version of yourself. And so that's what brings me fulfillment, not necessarily being a better coach than the next person or getting to the next level in, uh, training in a gym or a training company. Like I'm self-employed, right? So I don't have to worry about climbing the ladder in that sense um i do have to get better at my craft but that's really just about getting better and being better at helping my um my clients so um you know that's that's what's that's what's that's what i've been fortunate enough to fall into and to have this be my career have this be my day in and day out um but for you maybe you're you're craving deeper connections. Maybe you're craving more meaning um, or you have this voice in the back of your head that says you should be doing something different. It's going to happen after 30, right? We start to reevaluate just like we do with our goals. We, we reevaluate, we readjust, we reassess if we have to. We may not, what we enjoyed in our early 20s and, and maybe early 30s, we may not enjoy in our mid 30s and late 30s. We may not want to do the same things we may not want to be known for the same things or be um be related no i always lose words sometimes guys when i'm on here i swear i'm um i know my vocabularies <laughs> um and then the other thing we deal with guys sorry i'm move, moving right on into it uh when we get to 
a certain age in 30 when, when we when we have a family when we have a, a career um we have to balance those responsibilities right work can be very demanding family needs are constant there's no breaks from what the family needs every day there's no days off on being a dad there's no days off on being a husband or a boyfriend or a brother or a son whatever it is that you're contributing to your family there's no breaks when it comes to family um and so sometimes finding times for yourself finding time for yourself becomes almost impossible it feels like man i i just I, there's never going to be a moment to myself um and you kind of feel guilty in a sense that you haven't made time for yourself and then when you do make time for yourself, you feel guilty that you're not there for your family. So it's kind of like a little bit of a catch-22. It's damned if you do, damned if you don't. Um, but you definitely do have to make time for yourself. Um, you can't feel guilty for it. If It's like the example of that's always used for uh, the oxygen masks in an airplane. They tell you, don't put any, you can't help anyone else until you put yours on. Um, so if you run out of oxygen, you can't help anyone. So if you haven't been able to take care of yourself, you aren't going to be able to take care of other people. Um, so take care of yourself, be mindful of the time that you give yourself, um, and, you know, be, give yourself some grace when that, when those things happen or when family responsibilities get in the way or when work gets in the way. The, the best thing for me, and I was just talking about this at the gym today is, and yesterday with some other people is getting the workout done early in the morning is probably the most beneficial. Now I know it's, it's tough. I know it's hard to wake up early. I get it. Right. But like the benefits of you going to the gym before work, getting it done. Now, A, you don't have to worry that if something comes up during the day, if your family needs you later in the day, or if work needs you to stay late, you're not going to miss the gym. Now your workout is done. The second thing that's going to happen is you're going to have a lot more energy through the day and you're going to be in a better mood. I promise you make the sacrifice to wake up an hour earlier. You don't even have to go to the gym if you don't have time. Do a workout at home. Do a 30-minute workout at home. Do something to get your blood pumping, to get your oxygen into your brain, into your heart, into your muscle tissue, um, to get your endorphins up, to get that dopamine in your body, and to make you feel better and to put you in a much better mood for the people around you and for yourself so that you are more pleasant to be around because you're going to be around yourself the whole freaking day, right? I'm pretty sure you are. And if not, then you got to tell me what, how, and I don't even know how you, that I'm not. <sighs> All right. I'm going to move on because I'm going to get trapped. I'm going to take a quick sip of water, guys. Excuse me. I might just have to edit that out or cut that out at this point, but whatever. It's all good. All right. So let's move on here. We're going to finish up here. Um, not necessarily in the next like two minutes or so, but uh, quite shortly. Um, as long as I get my notes back, my laptop decided to mess with me right now. So, um, all right. So let's talk about some opportunities for transformation, you guys. Um, the first thing we're going to... Um, cover here is self-investment. Now we talk about self-investment. We talk about investing in yourself. We talk about investing. That means money, right? That means spending <laughs> what we don't like to spend on stuff. Um, but let's be real, guys. A lot of the stuff we spend money on, we spend on stuff that's not good for us. Um, so if we just kind of shift our mindset and think about, I'm investing in myself, right? We're over 30. We're not getting any younger. And if we haven't accomplished what we wanted to accomplish at this point, it's not going to happen if we don't make the changes we need to change. Um, we're at a point, a stage in our life where this it's, just, it's a turning point. We either turn and make the changes necessary to become better versions of ourselves, or we stay on the same path and probably in five, 10 years, we're in the same spot, just older and probably more cranky and depressed about it because we're older now. <laughs> um, so if we ignore the changes now, things are going to get harder later. Um, if you invest in yourself now, you're going to set yourself up for a thriving life later in your 40s, 50s, 60s, even your 70s. I have clients that I train in their late 60s who have been training for at least 20 to 25 years, have been doing some form of movement or exercise and and better nutrition and they're more nimble than any other person that age i see um 
Like think of your health like a retirement or like a bank account, right? The more you invest now, the earlier you start investing, the more interest you'll earn over time because you put that money in there longer. So the more you invest in your health now, the bigger the payoff down the line. There's a quote that says, the, if you don't invest in your wellness, then you're going to spend on your illness. All right. So if we don't get healthy now, we don't spend and invest on our health now, then later on down the line, the medical bills, I promise you, are way more expensive than what it takes to, to be healthy now. Um, so self-invest, all right? When we get to 30, when we get to 35, when we start to get older, we have an advantage. We've, we learn from our mistakes. We know what works. We know what doesn't work. We know what works for us. We know what things we need to stay away from. And if we don't actually make those decisions to stay away from those things, to actually choose the better habits, then that's our fault. Um, but we can use that knowledge to, to fuel our transformation even faster. We learn from our mistakes, we implement the changes, and we get better. You know, it's like a, it's like a, it's like computer software in a sense, right? If they, they bring out one version of it, you get feedback on it, you fix out all the bugs, and then you send out an updated version, and that's supposed to be a better version. Um, so learn from those mistakes, create a new version, and implement it. And you don't need to start from scratch, okay? Do what's build from where you you already know you're strong. You know, if it's easy for you to wake up early, then build off that. If it's easy for you to organize your food and and plan your meals, build off that. Okay, build on what's strong for you, and then fill in the spots that you feel weakest as you move along and as you feel more comfortable with the others. Oh, this is important, guys. We have to reframe and redefine masculinity a little bit. Uh, especially as a Hispanic, as a Hispanic male, um, coming from a traditional family, from a traditional home, there's this idea of being tough, right? And having a tough exterior and don't cry, don't show emotion, don't show pain, don't show sadness. It's not, it's not what boys do. It's not what men do. Um, my dad is like a prime example of that. And he doesn't do it on purpose. He doesn't do it because he's trying to be macho or anything like that or masculine. He just was raised that way. His father was a very hard man. And um, he just didn't show emotion. And so my dad grew up that way. He just didn't show emotion. Older now, he shows emotion in different ways. And I know that he's always been an emotional guy. He was just a very stoic face and just didn't show that emotion. And so for me, I kind of, carry that a little bit where I didn't want to show emotion, but I had a very emotional mother, <laughs> which was a good thing because I balanced it out pretty well. I would show emotion when I needed to, and I would hide it and not show it when I knew it was time to show a different face, right? Um, you know, I couldn't show emotions. If I was playing soccer, if I was in a tournament, uh, I could be upset and cry sometimes that we lost in the championship. Um, I would get very emotional about that. There'd be other times where we'd lose and I wouldn't. I'd be very just silent and solid. And I knew you're not crying about it, dude. You guys lost this game. <laughs> um, others are heartbreakers. So you feel a little different. But the idea of toughing it out, I think, is is outdated. It's burnt out. It's unnecessary. Um, and ignoring how we feel in that moment is actually doing us a disservice in the long run. So we have to be a little more conscious of acknowledging our feelings, showing and expressing our feelings, finding a safe space to do that. If you don't have a safe space or a person that you can come talk to, confide in, be vulnerable with, then seek that out. You know, it could be a close friend. It could be a cousin. It could be a relative. It could be a, a parent. You know, it could be um, a sibling. It could anyone, you know, you can find someone that can help you. Um, find that safe space for yourself. And once you allow yourself to open up to that emotion, to open up to those struggles, that's where you're going to find your true strength. And that's where you're going to find true healing and true recovery from whatever it is that you're dealing with. I promise you, I've gotten a lot more emotional in the last few years. Um, and my wife has noticed, it's kind of funny. I do cry a little bit more. Uh, but I 
most of my tears and my emotions come from pure joy sometimes. There's a lot of times where I think about where I'm at with my career, um, how I'm able to help the people that I help and the people that that I do train, the people that I do work with, the 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 text messages I get sometimes, the comments I get from them sometimes of the impact I'm making on their life is is so life changing for me. It's so heartfelt for me. It feels so good and it 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 does bring uh tears to my eyes. It does make me feel so much gratitude and so much emotion for that. Um and, and I have I, I have no problem showing that. I have no problem um bringing that to the surface. I think I've cried on a podcast before. <laughs> I think I've cried on a live before. Um but it I feel like we're stronger when we show our vulnerabilities because that means we're okay showing our cracks. Um we're okay showing where we hurt and the hardest thing to do is to put our hurt out in public. So if we are able to do that with no fear of judgment with no fear of um being unvalidated then that's where you find your true strength and that's where you become who you really are so if you feel like you still need to be tough please try to drop that please drop the facade ask for support you really need to take care of your mental well-being it's extremely important to talk about our feelings to let it all out and to not let it sit and fester and become something bigger that eventually just burst out into something nasty and we just don't want to do that and if you have kids if you have family then you being vulnerable you showing your weaknesses makes you a better role model for your kids um makes you a stronger partner in your relationship and it makes you a stronger friend and coworker in your professional and personal life when you can be authentically yourself people are going to gravitate to you more and they're going to trust you more so don't be afraid to show your feelings, please. Okay, guys, my my men out there, my men's over 30. If you're under 30, this is for you too, all right? Like, you just don't just because you're under 30 doesn't mean that this doesn't apply to you. Maybe you want to get a head start on all this stuff. Start now. Do all this stuff now because um, that's what's going to help. So that's it. That's week one. We're setting the foundation. Um, this is all has to do with my men's program as well i have a 30 year men's 30 men's over 30 program uh thriving in your 30s it isn't just about workouts uh it's not just about meal plans it's not just about setting goals and things like that excuse me sorry um <clears throat> you know we tackle mindset as well mindset changes we tackle your hormonal changes dealing with our metabolism dealing with our testosterone maybe we have to supplement differently maybe we have to eat differently based on how our bodies are changing right so we have to tackle all that we have to fit it into your busy lifestyle because your life is different than everyone else's you're not going to have the same um routines you're not going to have the same grocery stores kind of next to you you're not gonna have the same gym available right like there's different things so there, there's different factors we have to deal with uh, real world stuff and that's what this program is designed to do is to help anyone who's in any situation that or any man over 30 who's in a situation that they just need some guidance they need some accountability they need some help right i know where you're at i was i was overweight too guys i was 233 pounds at some point Luckily, now I'm 210. I'm a lot more fit. I still got, you know, I've been up and down with my weight because, you know, muscle gains and stuff like that. Um, but I'm no longer an obese man. Um, and, you know, I know where you've been. So I meet you where you're at. There's no cookie cutter solutions for anyone. Uh, we discuss where you're at. We customize the plan based on your goals, your challenges, and your lifestyle. So if you're ready to... Believe in yourself. If you're ready to stop feeling like you're stuck, my friends, if you're ready to start feeling a little stronger, more energized, and you really want to take control of your future, you really want to take your health back, um, send me a message. You can reach me at www.amfitnessnutrition.com. Just plug in your email and I will reach out to you within 24 hours to book a consult call. We can talk about what you're interested in and what can work for you. Um, so. Book that consult. Let's see if we're a good fit. Everyone else, if you 
if you're not a man over 30, that's okay, right? I still have programs available too, but I just wanted to make sure that this one shows that it's directed specifically for you um, to solve the issues that we all deal with as men over 30. So thanks again for joining my podcast, my friends. Thank you so much for listening to me. It's been 30 minutes, 29 minutes. Perfect. Keep it under 30. I try to keep it under 30 because, you know, we have short attention spans and my voice gets tired. <laughs> um, but next week, um, like I said, we're going to be diving into topics, helping men over 30. So next week, I'm going to have my client turned friend, buddy of mine. His name is Chad Widmer. Chad Widmer. Um, he, I've been training him for about five years now. Um, he has a great story. You guys can super relate. He was 240 pounds as well um overweight and now we're at 175 pounds it's insane insane you guys so i'm gonna have him on the next episode q a we'll talk we'll get to know him um and then you guys can decide for yourself if my program is worth your while everyone else thank you appreciate you um if you haven't already go ahead and follow me on instagram on tiktok on youtube on Twitter, on X. <laughs> the handle is at Coach Adamir, A D E M I R. Follow me there. Send me a message. Say what's up. Let me know if there's anything you want me to talk about. Um, the next few series, these next few weeks, is a series on men's over 30, but I'll be sprinkling in some random topics as well just to keep us entertained and keep us educated. Whew. All right. Oh, one more thing, guys. There is merch available. If you're watching on video, these are my t-shirts and fitness nutrition. I do also have another shirt on there. Um, the front of it says hashtag love yourself. The back has my logo. Um, go to amfitnessnutrition.com. You can go to the merchandise there. Order your own stuff. It'll ship directly to you so you don't have to worry about shipping to me and then having them go pick it up or anything. Nope. Get shipped directly to you. Y'all pay the company. They ship to you. They give you the shirt. Y'all have a problem with it. Take it up with them. There's also sweaters on there, tank tops. There's some cell phone cases. I think there's shorts and sweats too. Um, but I would love for you guys to get that merch, represent. And if you do, take a picture. Hashtag AM Fitness Nutrition. Hashtag Coach Adamir. And that is all. So I will talk to you guys next week. Thanks again for joining. Don't forget, you guys. Have a great week. Remember to love yourself and go be the best version of yourself. Bye.